أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تأكلوا أموالكم بينكم بالباطل إلا أن تكون تجارة عن تراض منكم ولا تقتلوا أنفسكم إن الله كان بكم رحيما رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته قرآن ويكلي جوز نمبر 5 I picked an ayah from Surah An-Nisa today and this is ayah number 29 very powerful phrasing and it captures really one of the main ethical principles of Islam those of you who claim to believe يا ايها الذين امنوا لا تاكلوا اموالكم بينكم بالباطل don't consume each other's money using falsehood don't lie on your hours at your, you know, at your job when you have to punch in. Don't lie about it. Don't earn, you know, uh, when you're a consultant and you get paid a certain number of out, you know, to fill a job or a, by the hour, and you're just sitting having coffee and chilling or whatever, and you're getting paid for that. Unless your employer knows that that's what you're doing. Illa an takuna an taradim an tijaratan an taradim minkum. Unless it's a trade that's happening, a business that's happening with mutual agreement among you. In other words, nobody can be a hundred percent productive all the time. That's not humanly possible. So you might feel like, okay, I'm going to work nine to five, but I take a forty-minute break sometimes. I just sit there and talk sometimes. Is that okay? Well, if your employer knows that's what you do and it's acceptable to him, then it's okay because it's mutually agreed. إلا أن تكون تجارة عن تراد منكم. Unless it's a trade, it's a business that's mutually agreed upon. Other than that, don't scam people out of money. Don't overprice things. Don't overcharge for your services. If you're a mechanic, don't inflate your price because you're the only mechanic in like 10 miles. And you know this guy's got a transmission problem. Might as well t tell him his timing belt and his, you know, his engine fl fluid and all this other stuff is messed up too. Because what's he gonna do? So all he can do is use you, right? Don't overbill people as you, if you're a physician, you know, and charge them more and more and more because you know they're desperate and they're coming to you. Don't manipulate people like that. So don't eat people's money using falsehood. Also, tarad uh, means that both parties are agreeing to the, the service or the product that's being exchanged. So if you know something about what you're selling or something about the service that you're providing, fine print if you will, that you know that your customer or your employer is not aware of, they need to be aware of it. They need to know. Because if they don't know and you're kind of skimming money out of them, then this is unacceptable to Allah. So most of our cell phone contracts, right, this, the fine print, this is bil batil. Because you get all these fees and like, you know, inconvenience fee or whatever, convenience fee and this fee. And they, you don't even know what these fees are for. And you never agree to them. But they're all tacked on there and they have a 40 page fine print that you have to sign at the end. And they know you're not going to read that if you're a normal human being. So, you know, th and that's how they get away with these kinds of false agreements. We Muslims, when we go into business or professional agreements or employment, we cannot consume money based on falsehood. We cannot eat people's money. And it's not just about employees with employers. It's employers with employees too, and that's what I'll end with. That employers, you know, decide to pay a certain amount. When you know your employees working harder and they're doing more and, they're, and you're not paying them more, as a result, or you're paying some employees more than you're paying other employees for the same exact work because you're giving preferential treatment. This is also falsehood. This isn't right. You can't do that. These are these are unethical standards that you pay some the same amount, or you pay somebody else more amount, even though they're doing the same work. You know, this is uh, you're eating their money because it's no longer your money. The person you underpaid, you you just ate their money. You know. And the only way you can get away with that is if they both antaradim minko. And finally, if they both agree to it and they're both happy with it. That's the amazing thing in the ayah. You don't just agree with your consumer, because you can get them to agree even if they're not happy. You know how car sales people get you to agree even if you're not happy and you sign the thing and you regret it later? You have to be happy. Both sides have to be happy and completely content with the agreement antaradim minkum. That's the beauty of this ayah. That you, if both parties are not content, then this is not a fair agreement. And once the fair agreement is in place, you have no right to complain. Because you're the one who consciously and clearly agreed to this sort of thing. This, if we abide by this principle, wallahi, our business practices and our organizations and our, you know, our companies, the companies that we run, and us as employees, we're going to have much better lives. May Allah Azza wa Jal help us be fair in our business dealings and implement the wonderful ethics that are in this beautiful ayah of Surah Al-Nisa. Barakallahu li wa lakum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.